Hello YouTube, Plains Prepper here. Today we're going to talk about mistakes not to make when you're building your first AR. Alright, here I have the first AR I ever assembled. Um, I made a number of mistakes on this gun which required me to replace parts and so I'm hoping this will help someone else not make the same mistakes. Um, just as a little uh, aside here, if you're looking to build a quality AR that's not going to break the bank but will still serve you well, my advice is to go to Palmetto State Armory and get one of their rifle kits and then go to your local gun shop and buy yourself a strip lower and then find yourself a rear sight. Um, if you're looking to build the rifle as cheap as possible, I advise going and getting a Daniel Defense fixed rear sight. They're about 70 bucks and they're extremely high quality. I have a, one of my pistol build and it served me very well. Um, with that though, you'd have a very basic rifle, an irons only rifle for around six or seven hundred dollars. And while I understand it's a little more expensive than say like an MMP Sport 2, which is also a, a fairly good rifle, I've heard a lot of good things anyway. I've not per personally shot one, but I've heard a lot of good things. Um, on that MMP Sport though, you have to pay the excise tax on the, tax on the entire cost of the rifle, where with this gun, I only had to pay the excise tax for firearms on the lower because that's the only part that's considered an actual firearm. The rest of this, I was able to get either at a gun show or mail order, no big deal, no problem. And it's the same way with that kit, is you have everything you need to build the gun and you can do it as cheap as possible. Okay, getting back to this gun and where I screwed up on it, starting at the rear end of the gun, um, I'll try to roll some pictures in here of the different iterations of this gun um, throughout its life. Starting off here, I have now I have an MOE buttstock, it works great, but originally I had a uh, Blackhawk, little cheapy buttstock that came with the buffer assembly. I thought I did really good. I got the whole thing for 30 bucks. Well, this tube is made out of very, very cheap aluminum. There's a scratch on the other side here where I scratched it putting it on and you can see it's just really cheap aluminum. The castle nut, which I ended up replacing as well, was very thin and the threads on it almost didn't fit the tube. And the next thing about it was the end plate here, the little nubbin that engages the uh, slot on the buffer tube that keeps the buffer tube from turning when you tighten the castle nut. That was completely out of spec and didn't even engage the slot. So what I'm having to do was set this at about a 45 and then as I tightened it, I tightened the buffer tube with the whole thing at the same time so that I eventually had a straight buttstock, but it was a lot more hassle than I had to go through. I replaced that as well. Um, the next thing that has given me some troubles in this rifle and this can be, I guess, open to interpretation, but I, I interpret them as problems, is the barrel. I spent about 100 bucks on eBay to get this barrel again. I thought I got a great deal. It's a no-name barrel. Um, it's a 5.56 with a 1.8 twist like I wanted. Um, however, I got a carbine length, and what I've determined is, unless you have some weight requirements or some portability requirements, um, always go with the longest gas system your barrel will allow. Um, this is a 16 inch, so mid-length would be the way to go here. Um, I have a mid-length mid Palmetto State Armory build that it's just so much smoother shooting than this gun. It's, I mean, the, not that either of them is bad on recoil because, I mean, it's a 5.56, but it's a lot smoother than this gun, so follow-up shots are easier, and also that gun won't wear out as quickly because there's not as much pressure getting into the internals of the gun when it cycles. Um, also, I took this out with this Primary Arms 1-6 to scope on it, and I was only able to do about a 4-inch group at 100 yards. I'll admit I was using standard ammo, I wasn't using match grade ammo or anything, but this gun, I don't shoot match grade ammo with this gun, so I'd like it to do a little better. I might try a different brand and see if that helps, but I, know, I just feel like I should be able to get a little more accuracy out of it. Maybe not, I know the Army standard is 4 MOA, so maybe that's just what this gun is going to be, is a 4 MOA gun. Um, Eventually, I plan on going back to irons only on it. This scope's on here just for testing, and at that point, the 4 MOA won't really matter. Um, the next big mistake I made with this rifle was the gas block. Originally, I had a low-profile rail gas block that I'd mounted my flip-up on. Well, the problem was that this rail and that rail were not on the same plane. So the best I could do with this gun was 15 inches high at 50 yards. So you can imagine 100, 200, you're getting you know further and further out until you fi the bullet finally starts to come back down. Um, so I swapped this out. Well, I got another aluminum gas block, which was again a mistake, that was rail height, so then I could zero my irons, but being that the gas block was aluminum, 
aluminum and steel don't expand at the same rate. So when this going, the gas level get hot, you start to get a gap around the barrel. So you're not getting a good seal anymore. Um, it never affected the reliability of the rifle, but what ended up happening is I had the uh, Magpul SL handguard on here, and I had powder burns on the inside of my handguard where the gas was escaping around the barrel. And I was like, well, that's not right, and so I swapped it out. The other thing about the aluminum gas blocks, if you Google it, you'll find images of where guys have fired them too quickly or gotten the gas block too hot, and the aluminum will actually blow out, like they'll have a hole in the side where the gas blew out because it got too hot. Um, and so I, I was just didn't want that in a rifle at all. I didn't want, I mean, didn't need a crappy rifle, don't want a crappy rifle, and didn't want to worry about that. So I ended up putting this uh, YHM uh, flip up front gas block on here, and it's served me quite well so far. Um, the difference is, is that it's about 80, 90 bucks, whereas the other two are about 20 bucks a piece. But it works, and I don't have, I don't have that issue with gas escaping anymore. Um, I did switch to a standard handguard just so I could use the sling mounts. Um, but that's sort of well worked and, and worked. Anyway, I know some people will say, well, that's the beauty of an AR. You can buy a cheap gun and then upgrade the parts. And that's true, but the thing is, what I end up spending on all the parts to eventually upgrade this rifle into what it is now, I could have either had a much nicer rifle than this one, or I could have saved myself some money by just buying the right parts in the first place as opposed to, I want a rifle right now, so I'm gonna build this rifle that just works and then upgrade parts later. Um, it's kind of the philosophy of buy once, cry once. I mean, it's better to you know spend a lot of money on something that's going to last a lifetime than to continually have to replace something. But I hope you found this video helpful and informative, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you later.